Hello, welcome to the developer session on future proofing your quantum development with QSharp and QIR. My name is Stefan J. Wernley, and I'm a senior software developer at Microsoft on the Azure Quantum team. I'm actually pretty new to the team, having only joined in February, and I've been very excited to dive into contributing to quantum development as part of the compiler and runtime team that works on QSharp. In today's session, we will be introducing QIR and its design philosophy, taking a look at the interoperability features it offers, examining some of examples of using QSharp along with QIR, then a short demo of a quantum algorithm executing via QSharp, and finally wrapping up with some final thoughts and ways for the community to get involved in the future of these tools. That's a lot to cover, so let's dive in. As to the field, I can't help but notice the kinds of buzzwords that get associated with quantum computing. Words like groundbreaking, cutting edge, revolutionary, unprecedented. And these are just a few that I found on Microsoft blog posts. These are certainly exciting words that describe the opportunity to innovate in the area of quantum computing, but they also imply some challenges for those developing in a field with so much growth and change. For those of us working on the infrastructure and application of this new technology, we must ask some important questions like, what languages and tool sets should we invest in that we know we can rely on? How can we take advantage of the classical and quantum technology that exists now while leaving room for the new technologies and innovations that are coming? And how can we bridge the scenarios and audiences of today's NISC systems or noisy intermediate scale quantum systems with the broad usages we anticipate for the future, or better yet, even the future usage we can't anticipate? At Microsoft, we've certainly been considering these questions as we develop our stack for Azure Quantum. And our answer to these is the Quantum Intermediate Representation, or QIR. So what is this Quantum Intermediate Representation? QIR is a language and hardware agnostic format built within the LLVM IR, meaning it defines how quantum programs are represented within LLVM. For those unfamiliar with it, LLVM is a mature open source compiler framework that is in why we at the IR level, what we need for quantum is not that different than the tools that are needed for classical compilation. Leveraging the LLVM tool chain grants us access to an arsenal of existing mature tools, such as those for dependency management and tracking that we would otherwise need to recreate from scratch. Additionally, the LLVM IR has exactly the same purpose as what we want from QIR. It serves as a common format across multiple front ends and back ends. The idea is that each language supports compiling into that intermediate format, and each execution target is capable of consuming it, saving the trouble of having to build an end to end compiler for each combination of language and target. Many classical languages already have an LLVM based compiler, such that building on top of the LLVM toolchain permits us to integrate with and use libraries or back ends written in these languages. So we can add domain specific languages like Microsoft's own QSharp to the left side and include quantum hardware or simulators on the right. This opens up great flexibility for mixing and matching the input languages and users want or need to use with a variety of potential execution environments. We are, for example, currently collaborating with Pacific Northwest National Laboratory to connect to a GPU backend for quantum simulation purposes, which you can read more about on our recent cloud blog that discusses this work. QIR defines how to represent quantum programs within the LLVM IR without requiring extensions or modifications of LLVM. The quantum specific elements are defined using existing LLVM constructs. Further, QIR is not specific to QSharp. Any programming language for gate-based quantum computing can be compiled into QIR. Similarly, QIR is hardware agnostic. It does not require a particular quantum instruction or gate set, but instead leaves it up to the target environment to define that. Thus, QIR 
represents the foundation for developing optimization passes and code transformations that can be shared across different languages and backends, while also facilitating integration between different frameworks. These optimizations can be existing passes supported by LLVM or even new quantum aware passes that consider the gates and qubits being used. As an example, this same cloud blog post at the bottom of the screen discusses our work with Oak Ridge National Laboratory to enable integration with the XACC quantum programming framework, including quantum specific optimizations. QIR also allows for arbitrary interactions between classical and quantum computations, which we believe is a crucial component of utilizing future quantum systems. Of course, since that's not yet supported by all backends, we include support for defining profiles that identify the subsets of QIR that correspond to the capabilities supported by specific backends. With all this, you're probably wondering, what does QIR actually look like? We can start with the example Alan Geller used in his great blog post introducing QIR. Here we see some Q -sharp code for a simple operation that establishes a bell pair between two qubits. Translating that into QIR, it's a pretty straightforward representation. We see the same two quantum instructions here prepended with QIS to denote them as part of the quantum instruction set that the chosen execution target supports. Again, this is normal LLVM code that we've established a convention for establishing, for addressing quantum specific execution. So this can compile into the existing LLVM toolset. Of course, this is a very simple example. So let's take a peek at something more complex. Here is an operation used in a random walk phase estimation sample, which performs the iterative application of the Oracle in each loop through the random walk. This example includes some more usage of Q-sharp language features like passing an operation as an argument or using within apply blocks to automatically perform the adjoint of a preparation. This code will first perform an H to prepare the control qubit, followed by an RZ and an indication of the Oracle, then unprepare the control qubit with another H. The corresponding QIR is definitely more complex, but it does capture the sequence expressed in QSharp. Apologies for it being a little cut off, but we're going to focus on specific parts. You can see that the Oracle is passed into the function as a callable pointer and later upgraded to a controlled variant and invoked using these quantum runtime or RT helpers. Looking specifically at the quantum instructions, you can see the same call to H at the top, followed shortly by RZ, then the preparation for an invocation of the Oracle, and finally, the last call to H, just as we'd expect. Again, because we are using existing LLVM IR syntax, we are able to take anything from a simple gate sequence to a more complex algorithm with loops, conditionals, and other classical elements mixed in with quantum instructions and represent them in this well-supported open source format. We can take this even further with cool things like executing a repeat until success based algorithm on today's quantum hardware. Here we see Q -sharp for an algorithm proposed by our very own Adam Paitznik and Krista Svor in their 2014 paper, where rotation on a target qubit is performed using two auxiliary qubits and repeated execution of gate sequences until the proper state is measured in the auxiliaries. Why is this so interesting? It shows that we can do classical computation and control flow based on measurement outcomes while qubits remain live, that is, while the quantum state remains coherent. So how does executing this work? Let's take a closer look at simulating it in VS Code. I'll go ahead and kick off the simulation on the side here while I walk through the algorithm. Um, here you can see the entry point to the program where we allocate and prepare the three qubits in the poly X basis. We invoke our recursive repeat until success algorithm, and then perform um, an RZ on the target qubit to rotate it back to its initial state. This means that we expect if the recursive uh, application has succeeded, we'll unprepare that so that measurement of the target qubit returns a zero at the end, indicating a success. A closer look at that recursive algorithm that I showed on the slide 
we have the first part of the circuit that gets applied to the auxiliary and resource qubits. And then a measurement of the, the auxiliary qubit is used as an indicator whether or not the correct state has been prepared in the resource qubit. If it has, and we measure a zero, we can continue on with our circuit. But if not, we unprepare, and then we can try the algorithm again. If we do measure the right state, we move on to the second half of the circuit, where we use the resource qubit and the target qubit together and perform a measurement on the resource qubit. If we measure a zero, we know we've succeeded and we can finish there. But if we measure a one, then there's a simple correction to return back to the initial states. And again, we can try the recursive algorithm one more time. So you can see from the results here on the right that even performing this algorithm just once, we have a pretty high probability of success. But by increasing the um, allowed number of repetitions, we're able to get higher and higher probabilities of success, even with this relatively small sample size, which shows off the power of this algorithm and the ability to use mid-circuit measurement to uh, determine whether or not to repeat the uh, corresponding elements of the algorithm. This probability begins to approach 100% as we increase the number of retries that the circuit is allowed to use. So graphing that result, we see again that this probability of success graphed against the limit on the number of recursions has a nice curve that matches the expected probabilities of the algorithm. But we can take this one step further. We've actually been able to run this Q -sharp code against Honeywell's H0 system using the Azure Quantum Service. And we see a trend in results that tracks with the simulated behavior. This is real data from hardware execution that demonstrates the power of expressive, high-level language constructs to tap into hardware capabilities. And it's just the beginning. This is a glimpse of the future that we are building towards with Azure Quantum. In Azure Quantum, we support execution of a variety of quantum applications on a diverse set of backends from different quantum hardware providers. And to accomplish this, we are investing in and incorporating QIR as the common representation for all of these scenarios. So to wrap it all up, why use QIR? Quantum computing as an industry is still just beginning. And the quantum computing community is tiny compared to the broad computing and programming community. So in order to emulate and accelerate the progression for quantum computing over the next decade, not only do we need to take full advantage of the classical tools and resources at our disposal, we also need to leverage the insights into how computing itself has evolved over the course of more than half a century. We have the tremendous advantage of hindsight into what the essential success factors were that growth possible. In the coming years, we expect that there will be exciting advances in how classical and quantum computations can interact at the hardware level. With QIR, we provide a foundation for developing the software frameworks that can target today's devices and the more powerful systems of the future. That way, the investments of today will still pay dividends as the industry continues to evolve. And just as importantly, we're getting the word out now so that QIR can truly be a community-driven effort built with active collaboration and feedback from developers all across the industry. With that in mind, I highly encourage you to check out the QSharp language repo on GitHub, where you will find the proposals and design for QIR, as well as the QSharp runtime repo, which includes an early prototype demonstrating the usage of QIR with the LLVM and Clang tool chains. And if you'd like to learn more about QSharp specifically, we have excellent resources in our QSharp blog and the new QSharp learning module. Thank you for your time today, and I look forward to seeing your contributions to QSharp, QIR, and the future of quantum computing.